Welcome everyone to the Noir Lab updates of the Aura member reps. I'm Patrick McCarthy. Begin by reminding everyone what NSF's Noir Lab is. We are the unification of all of NSF's nighttime astronomy assets. That is the Kitt Peak and Cerro Tololo Observatories, the Gemini Observatory that we operate with our international partners, and operations of the Rubin Observatory, which is a partnership between the NSF and the Department of Energy. In addition to the observatories, we operate the Community Science and Data Center that provides data archives, software tools, and the time allocation process. Kitt Peak and Cerro Tololo we now call the Mid-Scale Observatories, and they are led by Lori Allen. The Gemini Observatory is led by Jennifer Lotz. Operations of the Rubin Observatory is led by Bob Blum. And the Community Science and Data Center is led by Adam Bolton. Overall leadership in the lab is provided by Beth William, Deputy Director, and by Inger Jorgensen, Associate Director for Operations. We've created a matrix organization that provides services to each of the programs. These include Science and Research, headed by Avi Saha, Engineering under the leadership of Mikhail van der Hoven, Center Operation Services provided by John McLean and Company, and lastly, Communications, Education, and Engagement under the leadership of Lars Christensen. All or nearly all of these leaders will be with us today for our discussion that follows this presentation. Our mission is very simple. We're here to enable great science. We do that by operating state-of-the-art ground-based observatories, their optical systems, and their instruments. We provide data products, software tools, and services aimed at a diverse and inclusive community. When we put together our 20-year vision for Noir Lab last fall, we made sure to put diversity, equity, inclusion right at the front of the document rather than making it appear as an afterthought. We're committed to being an agent for change, both within astronomy and within society at large. We intend to make diversity part of everything that we do. We will lead by example by building our own diverse workforce, and we will help shape the STEM workforce of tomorrow. Right now, we're working to implement dual anonymous review for our time allocation process, very similar to what is done at the Space Telescope Science Institute. Look for that to start in 2022A. We have appointed diversity advocates at each of our site. They work with the staff, the local communities, and the leadership to ensure that we build diversity into all of our local operations. Dara Norman is building a team that will help her realize her vision of using big data to drive an inclusion revolution. So watch for that. It's bound to have high impact. When we think about inclusion, we need to look beyond just the scientific community, in particular to be inclusive and respectful for the communities in which we operate our observatory. We are very privileged to have access to pristine mountaintops in Arizona, Hawaii, and Chile, we make sure that we recognize and respect the culture, the tradition, the practices of the communities around the observatories in which we work. Now for the bad news. Um, as you know, all of our observatories, like much of the rest of the world, closed in March of last year in response to the COVID pandemic. We spent a fair amount of time thinking about how we can operate safely. And in May, we were able to reopen the Gemini North Telescope followed in September by Gemini South, Cerro Tololo, Cerro Pachon, and Kitt Peak. All of the telescopes are now operating nightly, and keeping them open and doing so safely is our top priority. Unfortunately, we're not able to accommodate uh, visitors to any of the observatory sites at this time, but watch our website for updates. Uh, that will change certainly at some point. Transition now and talk a bit about what's going on at the various programs, starting with the Gemini Observatory. As I mentioned, both telescopes are operating as usual. They're serving a diverse set of instruments and observing modes. In addition to the standard proposal mode, I'm happy to report that both the fast turnaround and director's discretionary proposal modes are now available and functioning. The large and long programs are working again as well, and I believe there is a proposal deadline that has just passed quite recently. In addition to the instruments that are operating now, there's some exciting instruments coming along in the pipeline. The GHOST high-resolution optical spectrograph for Gemini South is now in the dome after a long delay associated with COVID. The Scorpio instrument for multi-messenger astronomy, both imaging and spectroscopy, is now in the fabrication phase. 
and the Igrens II mid-infrared spectrograph, the follow-on to the very successful and popular Igrens spectrograph, is now being developed by our colleagues at Kazi in Korea. So look forward to that very popular instrument. In addition to hardware, the Gemini team provides a wide range of software tools under the Dragons software package, primarily focused so far on imaging, but they're now expanding that to spectroscopy. So keep your eyes out for that. That will provide additional tools to help you process your Gemini data. Transition now to talk a bit about the 4-meter and smaller telescopes, the Mayall and the Blanco. There's a lot going on at Peak and Cerro Tololo. There's some major dark energy experiments either concluding or underway. The dark energy survey on the Blanco stopped observing some time ago, but there's a lot of science going on and data releases, and so there's still great opportunities there. The dark energy spectroscopic instrument survey is just getting underway at Kitt Peak, and I'll talk about that next. But closer to home, there's some very interesting exoplanet capabilities coming along, particularly at Wynn, working in partnership with NASA and Penn State. We're fielding the NUID precision radial velocity spectrograph that's now in its commissioning phase, and it looks to be meeting its goals for precision and stability. So that will be a great resource for exoplanet science. In addition, there's a variety of opportunities for PI or discovery-driven science, and then there's an emerging framework for time domain observing, and of course, multi-messenger science across all of our platforms. A critical addition to our multi-messenger uh, arsenal is the move of the new firm wide field infrared camera from Arizona to Chile. That will go on the Blanco and give Blanco visible to near infrared imaging capability for tracking down counterparts to gravitational wave sources and other transients. Look for that to come online in 2022B. The DEVI survey is a, is a very ambitious survey uh, for dark energy using baryonic acoustic oscillations. They intend to measure the redshifts for 35 to 40 million galaxies over a five-year period. It uses a very ambitious multi-fiber instrument built at the um, DOE's Lawrence Berkeley Lab. Uh, the instrument is now on the telescope and collecting data. And just to give you an idea of its potential, in December alone, in one observing run, they collected 50,000 well-measured redshifts. So this is a very exciting project. We're really pleased to be partners with the DOE and the DESI team, and we look forward to great things coming out of this. So stay tuned. It's going to have a very high impact. The Community Science and Data Center is the team least impacted by COVID. They're able to continue coding and processing data and serving large data sets. Just in the past few months, they've released a DR2 for the Dark Energy Survey. Soon they release the next uh, data set for the DESI Legacy Imaging Survey and a number of other surveys and catalogs that will be of great interest. It's particularly um, enlightening or heartening to see them serving data from the Gemini Large and Long programs, uh, a number of those now on the CSDC archive, you know, increasing our integration of all the programs under CSDC. In addition to imaging, there's a lot going on now in spectroscopy within CSDC, and particularly we're getting ready to serve the 40 million plus spectra coming out of DESI. In just under a year from now, you should be looking for the first data release coming out of the DESI team and then hosted on CSDC. In the long term, uh, we're looking to turn CSDC into a real national resource for data science, for ground-based OIR astronomy, and particularly to use that to broaden participation to bring people in who don't normally go to the observatory for one reason or another, to allow them to do science on large or small scale data sets, um, to work from their own institutions or their own homes or wherever, to connect to the data and do their computing and do their science. There's a number of different ways to get into the CSDC system, and you can look at any of the links here to explore the data archives, the time domain system, and the software as well. Looking not so far into the future, we're very excited about operations of the Rubin Observatory. Some major milestones passed just in the past few months, in particular, the selection of the data facilities. The DOE and NSF have agreed that SLAC National Lab will be the primary U.S. data facility. We're very pleased with that decision and working closely with SLAC to turn that into a reality. In the meantime, we need an interim data facility to allow us to start testing our software, exercising the various modes, and understanding how we will all work with Rubin data. And we'll be doing that through the Google Cloud. So that is now underway, and we're working to prepare for data release zero that will allow people to get a feel for how they will work with the Rubin data. 
Bob Lum and his team are maturing their operations plan. It looks very good now. It's a balanced partnership between the NSF and the DOE. Noir Lab will be the lead on the NSF side, and Slack will be the lead on the DOE side. Bob and his team are building up their staff for operations by bringing on people from the construction team, but also by making new hires as well. We're working very closely with the construction team to ensure we have a smooth handoff, and Steve Kahn will talk today about the schedule for bringing construction to a conclusion, so pay close attention to that. Looking a little further in the future, we're very excited about things that are on the horizon. We intend to grow the AO capabilities of the Gemini telescopes, both north and south. There's a variety of AO modes that we are developing. We're looking forward to, to fielding our time domain system will allow us to to take the enormous stream of alerts coming out of Rubin and feed them to our telescopes and to others so people can do all kinds of follow-ups or whatever particular variety of transient they are interested in. Looking towards the second half of the decade, we're excited by the possibility of using Rubin and Roman together. When the Roman Space Telescope goes on the air or on orbit, the Rubin LSST survey should be about halfway towards completion and we will have wide field deep imaging from the U-band through the K-band, enabling a very wide range of multicolor panchromatic science. Looking further afield to early in the next decade, we're very excited about the US ELT program, a program to field a bi-hemispheric system of 30 meter class telescopes optimized for adaptive optics and faint object spectroscopy. They will open whole new avenues in ground-based astronomy and synergy with space observatories. We're very excited about that. Like everyone else, we eagerly await the report from the Astro 2020 process. That report will help us build our long range plans on a firm foundation. So that gives you a flavor of all the exciting things that are going on uh, at the observatories under the Noir Lab. Um, we are very interested in hearing your thoughts, uh, how we can serve you better. So we'll shortly have a discussion period in which we will hear from you and you will hear from all of the leadership team and we can answer your questions and engage in discussion. So thank you so much for your attention.